saying, This is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 20 There is a strange power about the very word blood, and the sight of it always affects us. A kind heart cannot bear to see a sparrow bleed, and unless he sees it often, he will turn away with horror at the slaughter of a beast. As to the blood of men, it is a consecrated thing, it is murder to shed it in wrath, and it is a dreadful crime to squander it in war. Is this solemnity, occasioned by the fact that the blood is the life, and the pouring forth of it the token of death? We think so. When we arise to contemplate the blood of the Son of God, our awe is even more increased, and we shudder as we think of the guilt of sin and the terrible penalty that the sin-bearer endured. Blood, always precious, is all the more priceless when it streams from Emmanuel's side. The blood of Jesus seals the covenant of grace and makes it forever sure. Covenants of old were made by sacrifice, and this everlasting covenant was ratified in the same manner. Oh, the delight of being saved upon the sure foundation of divine engagements that cannot be dishonored. Salvation by the works of the law is a frail and broken vessel whose shipwreck is sure, but the covenant vessel fears no storms, for the blood of Jesus protects the whole vessel. The blood of Jesus made his testament valid. Wills are of no power unless the testators die. In this light, the soldier's spear is a blessed aid to faith, since it proved our Lord was really dead. There can be no doubt upon that matter, hence we may boldly appropriate the inheritance that he has left for his people. Happy are those who see their title to heavenly blessings assured to them by a dying Saviour. But does this blood have no voice to us? Does it not bid us to sanctify ourselves unto him by whom we have been redeemed? Does it not call us to the newness of life, and urge us to complete consecration to the Lord? Oh, that the power of the blood of Jesus might be known and felt in us this evening.